All right, welcome back to Morning Express. And you can see Tamima is all set with her guest and she's holding a breast dummy. So it's going to be a very important conversation this morning. It's Cancer Awareness Month and today all focus in is on breast cancer. So we're going to get an understanding of how to do those checks, right? The self-examination. Self-examination. Yes. Okay. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that because I have with me in studio uh, a nurse and she's going to take us through the step-by-step -step guide of how you can actually get to do the self breast examination because it's October and it's a cancer awareness month so uh, before we start Sophia I know a lot of people had I, I know a lot of people had questions about I know a lot of people had questions about whether or not we are actually going to use real life breast in yes, studio today. yes 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 <laughs> Yes, but we are not, of course, in distancy. Uh, we are going to use that dummy. Yes. So I'm going to introduce my guest right now, Balpreet. Hi. And we have a nurse in studio as well. Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Yes. Yeah, Elizabeth, you're from which health center? From Harming Healthcare Limited. I mean, I'm one of the clinical nurses in the outpatient department. Okay. And Balpreet? I'm also I'm, I'm from Harming Health Limited at uh, base in Olivia Plaza. Okay, so today, yesterday we had an interesting discussion just touching on cancer and we had Zeda in studio and Zeda is actually a cancer survivor. And October being the Cancer Awareness Month, we were like, today we have to teach you how to do your own breast self-examination. And Balpreet, I just want you to explain to anyone who's watching from home how important it is to do your own breast examination. It is important because when you have early detection, um, it actually saves lives because a lot of the cancers that are recorded in or reported in these days, whether it's breast cancer or any other cancer, are actually reported at a much later stage. And and that's when um, treatment is very minimal at a prolonged stage then. So we at Humming Health, as at, and our main ethos is we actually encourage preventative care. And preventative care would also be doing daily, like regular breast examinations. Okay. And uh, talking about breasts, we all have breasts. Yeah. Men have breasts, women have breasts. But there's this assumption that breast cancer is something that just affects women. That's not true. It can also affect men. I have heard of a couple of cases, but I think that's more. I've heard, uh, not. It, I guess it's lack of awareness about that over here in Kenya, um, as you say. So that's why I feel everyone needs to be sensitized uh, to have awareness on this with why we should do daily checks on cancer. And we prepared a small fact sheet for you just to stress how important it is that you take the issue of cancer very seriously and appreciate the fact that it can affect you. As, and, I, and I think that a lot of people assume that it's something that is genetic, it's, you inherit it from someone in your family, but sometimes you can actually be the first one in your line to actually get cancer. So we prepared a very interesting fact sheet that I want you to check out right now. And when we come back, we're going to teach you how to do the self-breast examination. Check this out.
So what we're saying today on the Morning Express is that early detection definitely does save life. And later on, actually in just a couple of minutes, we're going to be teaching you how to self-examine yourself, this being October, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But before that, the statistics say that approximately every three minutes, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, and approximately every 12 minutes, breast cancer claims another life. And we did say that men can also get breast cancer, but 70% of breast cancer cases occur in women who have no identifiable risk factors. So my question to you would be, uh, with the statistics being what they are in Kenya, do you have any real tangible statistics about the women who are affected with breast cancer? Well. There's a lot of uh, um, sensitization going on with governments, a lot of NGOs. In fact, just a couple of weeks back in Karura, they did a. Uh, to, uh, we, we Kenya was one of the 80 countries to participate in a global uh, walk, you know, at Karura to make awareness for breast cancer. So there's a lot going on in the country uh, on generally just sensitizing patients on breast cancer awareness. But they have said that right now, cancer itself is uh, probably got it. I think there was a statistic where they said about 10,500 patients had, there was a death rate on that. So that's sort of in par with HIV as well as road accidents. So it is a very, very high uh, statistic. And what do you know about the causes? Because I'm sure that for a lot of people, there's that misconception that it's a Western disease, it's well, a Western problem. I think a lot of it has to do also with we our lifestyle now. We eat more processed food now. Uh, we microwave our food more. There is an article that we put onto our website on harming health care that said um, um, on our Facebook page that uh, said um, that when you use plastic tins, you know, that that also, uh, and heating food in the microwave, that kind of like adds to, uh, uh, you know, uh, pyrogens that add, add, add on to cancer. So there are different studies on it. I think everyone's still researching that a lot, but I think a lot of it is we have, we have a, lot, a different sort of lifestyle, and that's why a lot of people are now going on to more organic food now and uh, trying to be more health conscious, a lot of having a lot of supplements in their diet, um, and you know, a lot of people are smoking. There's just there's a lot of different um, factors that can contribute towards it besides genetics. Okay. And for you as a nurse, Akina Mama and Pingini Waschana wakujia pale kwenye zahanati, what are some of the com common questions and misconceptions that they have about cancer? Yeah, actually many times when they come to us, yeah, they are, most of them are really misconceived, uh, they have misconceptions, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like some of them are like, uh, they thought sometimes uh, they've done something to have cancer, Many people feel like I've done something wrong to God, or it's the kind of life I've been living. If I, like for example, if their lifestyle has not been very good, live alone, uh, food stuff, yeah? Their kind of life, the way they've been treating people badly, the way they've been relating with other people, they're like, is that the reason why like, one would have cancer? I'm gonna take but, a couple uh, of I'm gonna take a couple of your questions. So if you're watching from home, you can tweet me at Mr. Mima on Twitter, hash Morning Express. Ask uh, if you have any questions that you want to be answered on breast cancer, the causes, treatment. If you know anyone who's suffering from cancer and perhaps you are curious about this disease and how you can, as a friend, as a relative, as a parent, how you can assist them, please tweet your questions at me at Mr. Mima. SMS us on two two one five five five. We'll be taking them later on in the show and still on uh, breast cancer causes myth fact uh, is it a lot of people will wonder if I if I if I hurt my breast probably through an accident can that get can that cause cancer well it doesn't because that is a different that is trauma. something very different but occasionally trauma later on because of this, this the cells might later change that can also uh, make you make it that can be also be a risk factor later so we have to be very because careful injury about to our breasts yes, because we, we have all have breast. them. Yes. Men and women, men all and have women. Yes. 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 And the other thing is, especially on women and lifestyle, contraceptives. And I think this is, this is a common question with a lot of women. You'll find that, oh, I will not use contraceptives because they cause ABCD and cancer is usually one of the diseases that is very widely mentioned. 
Well, I think it varies on the person and it varies on maybe their lineage. If it's, uh, there are certain, there are different contraceptive pills on the market. So they should always get advice from their gyno or their general practitioner in regards with which contraceptive pill to take. Uh, because with certain people, the contraceptive pill will screen ladies and actually help, you know, protect them and, uh, with cancer and other cancers like cervical cancer. Um, you don't just start a contraceptive pill and then you're not monitored on it. So they do have its beneficial uh, uh, effects as well as non-beneficial effects. So it depends. So maybe if you had breast cancer uh, running through your family, then you would be avoided, you would be advised on which pill contraceptives to take and which ones not to take, you know. So I, I think with that, it is a bit of a, um, a dramatized, uh, you know, it's a misconceived thought and I think that you need to get pr uh, proper advice on that with your gynecologist or their uh, general practitioner. Okay, very good point there. And I think this is really a wake-up call for a lot of women. Yeah. Because you find that something like contraceptives, they're taken over the counter. Self-prescribed. Not correct at all. They shouldn't do that because that can affect their blood pressure as well. And it doesn't suit some people. It should, it's not something you need to self-prescribe. You can get DVT. There are other things you can get with it. And a lot of the other myth, a lot of women don't want to take a contraceptive pill is because they think they're going to put on weight. You know, there are so many misconceptions about it there where they, they do need to get proper advice on it. Okay. And what is the importance of actually do, examining yourself? It's for early detection to see if something is wrong. You just know your body. You know what was, you know what's right, what's not right. By and so, it's something that is very normal to do, and you should do it. Okay. So take us through the motions. When am I supposed to do the self-examination? Can I do it at any time? Sure. I'll let Liz do mm -hmm. that. Liz. Yeah. Breast, just before I sh demonstrate how you're supposed to do it, self-breast so examination, as about Prita said, is very important because you know yourself better. When you know yourself, you'll be able to note anything that is very abnormal, and that is why we emphasize on that, yeah? And uh, I'm going to talk about when you should do, because uh, every lady is supposed to do self-breast examination from the age of 20 and onwards. Uh, the ladies who are still menstruating, they still get their period. Mm -hmm. It's always wise. You do it uh, three to four days after your, you finish your period. That is very important. Because Reason being, yeah, during your periods, your breasts are tender. They feel like lumpy. So when they feel like that, they can really confuse you when you're doing your cell breast examination. So you want breasts that are not affected by the hormones and they are free and you can be able to detect anything that is not, uh, that is not normal. For the ladies who are postmenopausal or who, are, who do not have regular periods, it's all, we encourage them just to pick one day. Like you can, for example, you can be saying the seventh day of every month, I can be doing my cell breast examination. So what I've just had is that you actually have to know your body Yes, and if you are a menstruating female, you have to actually do the test post your period. Yeah. Yes, yes, because we all know the changes that occur when you are when it's that time of the month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what are the? Th I, I know there are three ways that you can actually do the exam. Yeah. So we've got uh, three patterns yeah, mm -hmm. that you can actually use, and we normally teach all of them so that you can choose for yourself, which is easier. So we're going to learn like, three different ways yeah. of how to do it. Yes. Okay. So the first one being. So we've got the vertical one, mm -hmm. whereby, which I'm going to demonstrate, yeah? The vertical one is whereby you, you've got your breast, yeah? Careful, this careful is the upper. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So I've got so the upper part of the breast. Yeah, this is standing. Yeah. When you look at this, this, is the upper part that goes up to the mm -hmm. shoulder. The lower bit is the, the whole breast tissue, as you can see. It's all made of fat, mm -hmm. yeah? And inside, of course, we've got some lobules that make all that the, the whole breast. So the first the first way to examine yourself is standing. The second way is you do it on your standing. Mm -hmm. You can do it when you're lying. You can do it when you're taking a shower. Okay. And then well now you have when you when you're in that position it is you to identify the pattern. Once you've been taught which one is easier for you to use, yeah? Like I'm going to demonstrate. Okay. Like if I choose the vertical I'm going to use the mostly the three fingers, my three mm -hmm. fingers. Like then you use like a yeah. scout. Yes. Yeah. Then you can use your the pads of your fingers, not these, because you can see because that. When you say the pads, you mean this your, part. Yeah, this part okay. of your fingers, okay. and then you just go gently into your breast. If I'm, let's say, for example, I'm doing the vertical, I'm going to start uh, from uh, under the axilla, 
end between the breast and the axilla. Those are two important regions. When you say regions. axilla, just for That's everyone to go the same area. page with us. The axilla yes. is which part exactly? Now, in the, in the, for the normal human being, yeah, mm -hmm. this part of course comes from the shoulder. Then just around here, as you move upwards, you've got the axilla. So this and part. And we have, yes, that part. Mm -hmm. And then under the axilla, we have some uh, lymph nodes that also connect from the axilla to the breast tissue. Mm -hmm. So you have to really bear in mind that you're not just using, doing, doing it on the breast, but you're also going to look at the areas that around the breast, which is very important. That is something we normally emphasize on here. Yeah? Then once you have checked on those areas, now you come to your breast and then you, you, can, you go, you, you, you can just pad, yeah, that is vertical. So still and using the... You're using your pad and then mm -hmm. you're doing it vertically. Do not remove your hand. Yeah, it's like you are always in a circular motion. kind of motion. Mm -hmm. You're feeling it. So you just areas where you feel breast. like yes, yeah. mm -hmm. where you feel like an area you cannot go deeper. There is a bit of more fat tissue. You can go a bit deeper. Yeah, depending. Oh, on so the whole idea is to actually press. Yeah, you yes, press yes, very, yes. So very, very gently. Any but lumps that apply some or pressure. nodes that yes. shouldn't be there. Yeah. yeah, and then you go. You make sure you have touched the whole breast. Yeah. And I think the only way that you can know if Circularly. something is weird, if something yeah. is different, is you actually have to know how your breast, breast feels, feels like on exactly. a normal day. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And something I've not mentioned, mm -hmm. just before you go into the examination, there's what we call the observation. I think Balprita has touched on it mm -hmm. a bit, yeah? We observe your breast first. That is the first thing you observe before so you go So you have to look? look the, yeah. yeah. Know what it looks look. like on a, no yes. on a normal day, just yeah. like before touching? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In front of your mirror, you look at yourself, what are we observing for? You're looking for any scales on your breast. That is very important because a normal breast is not supposed to have any scales. So or you say it's the scales, it's something, something like dry skin. Some dry skin there. But it can also skin. be a dimpling of the skin, something very similar to like what an orange peel would look mm -hmm. like. So you get a dimpling or a color change. Mm -hmm. It's also with your nipple as well. Looking at that, it, did, it does, has your nipple like distended in a different way. <laughs> what you if, know. And on the uh, nipple, what if someone is a breastfeeding mom? Well, with them, uh, usually um, the uh, midwives, they, you know, have a look with moms and they have usually also memory glands sometimes are a bit swollen as well on the side near the axillary on this area. So with them, you wouldn't say, I wouldn't tell them to be alarmed because they're breastfeeding mm -hmm. moms, but they can always show it to their midwife or their gyno again when they see, mm -hmm. but they should be fine. But that's a different soreness of a nipple that you're getting. This is now a, a different age group where it's an unexplained soreness on your nipple or an unexplained change on your nipple, whether it's the color, whether it's uh, the shaping you know you just know it, then or discharge you, mm. that's just mm. not it's explained just not something that is unexplained that shouldn't be there that's also something a factor that you need to raise up okay so we are looking uh, the changes that we are looking for size uh, the shape of the shape. breast yeah. yes uh, bumps and lumps yes when you're feeling it yes. and the control the symmetry of your breasts yes and as women, we, I know we usually joke around this that not both breasts are not the same size. Exactly. One is usually either bigger or smaller or has a different shape. But a key thing is that you have to know what your breasts look like on and a normal like. day. Yes. yes. Okay. So other changes to look for also are uh, toes or scaly skin, as mm -hmm. you've mentioned. Or dimpling the of the skin. Skin discoloration yes. or dimpling and discharge. Yeah. yeah. And I think by the time you're getting to discharge, then there's something it's very, wrong. very wrong. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of ladies, especially in grassroots areas, they not urban areas, they they need to really get sensitized on this because they all feel they get tabooed and they th go to a witch doctor thinking, oh something's wrong with me or you know they get stereotyped that it, with with cancer not only just breast cancer but all sorts of cancers so that's another thing where we're, we're working on is, is uh, with ourselves is to try to sensitize people on education that these are things that need to be seen and spoken about we're also working hand in hand with other local celebrities like Alicia Popit to increase awareness and try and get people to give testimonials on finding out uh, you know telling them their experiences about about cancer so that people are able to talk about these things and not go to a witch doctor or think witchcraft has been done on them. These are normal things. Definitely. Okay, so we're just going to take that one final time and I want you to pay very close attention. This is
is the breast that I'm holding up right now. And I'm going to do it just to just to check whether we were paying attention when you were saying it. Mm -hmm. So you say, use my three fingers, yeah. do the scout salute. Yes. yes. And actually take it round. Yes. Pressing. Pressing very pressing. gently. Yes. Because I'm trying to feel, is there any pressure? Is there anything different yeah. with my breast? Yes. Right? Just take it round, take it round. Then, and, and the first thing, actually, I forgot this. The first thing you said is you need to look at your breast. Yes, make sure it looks sure. normal. Once it looks yes. normal, then you start feeling. Yes. Yeah? And this, and, and what I'm doing right now, you can actually do it when you're standing in front of a mirror yes. uh, or when you are and in the shower. Down. Yes, yeah. or lying flat. Or lying flat. Whatever is comfortable okay. for yourself. Okay. Yeah. So, but when you're lying flat, is it different? Because now the breast is like yes. this. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you're lying flat, yeah, actually, most people encourage on your lying flat, they say it's more easier to examine your breast because you've got the whole tissue spread out. Mm. So you'll be able to examine better. Mm. And what you do when you're lying flat, what emphasizes the breast nicely, you can put one pillow. Like if I'm examining on my left side, I put a pillow under my left shoulder. Mm. And then I just put one arm behind my head and then I'll use my right hand to examine. So just Likewise, like you're doing it. Just like I'm doing mm -hmm. it, yeah? Because now this one, I, I, I cannot be able to demonstrate on no, this. No, I, I, I know the women, the women yeah. Yeah. get the difference. Yeah. And yes. I'm not forgetting the auxiliary <laughs> yeah. area connecting. The because when you're lying arm. down and when you're seated, yeah. evidently when you're, when you're standing, yeah. your, bra has, you, you, your bra supports your breast most of the time. And yeah. of course you can't wear a bra when you're doing the examination. No, your mm. bra should rule be out at that time. Yeah, but let's not yeah. assume rule number one. You, you cannot have a bra when you're self-examining mm. yourself. No. You're supposed yeah. to remove your top plus your bra. Okay, so I'm just going to go on Twitter right now to check out some of your responses and ask questions to the good doctor. Someone here asking, uh, where can I go? Uh, thank you very much for the tips that you've given on the self-examination here. But if I wanted to visit a doctor because I have some, I think, discharge on my breast, where should I go? Well, she can go... She can come to Humming Healthcare, but she could go to yeah. and whatever is closer to her, whatever is e easily accessible to her. If she already has a general practitioner, she could go to him um, or her. She could go to a gynecologist, uh, but she needs to get that examined ASAP. Okay, someone here also asking, please clarify, is it four days after the menses or immediately after my menses? Uh, three to four In days. Three to four days, not immediately, because mm -hmm. your hormones have not yet gone back to the normal uh, function. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. you still have some tenderness with your breasts yeah. because of the hormones. Then still someone here at Ian Mpakwanik. Man, you have a hard name. You're asking, <laughs> explain more on breast cancer on men. I still don't believe this. Well, for men also, they're going to do the same checks with the breast cancer in the same way. We, we, we didn't actually emphasize that. And uh, yeah, there, has been ch uh, um, uh, uh, there have been cases where men have also been reported with breast cancer, and that is also a tissue um, with them, but it's not got a lot of fatty um, deposit as women's do with the, you know, the milk glands. So, but it is a similar similar anatomy and they do get breast cancer as well and find uh, someone someone here also asking does the bra does the bra that I'm wearing increase my risk of getting breast cancer like if the bra is not fitting right if it's too tight if you're wearing a well-fitting bra then that is fine uh, yeah. I don't think it's more for risking on breast cancer but more with just your circulation in your breast and your and maybe your posture yeah, yeah, you can't be and other, <laughs> that would just give yeah. other uh, give you okay. other scenarios then a very a very interesting question here from this is from Mary Mary's Mary is asking whether if you have bigger breasts your chances of getting cancer are higher no not necessarily no. okay yeah. so it's it's more or less on genes lifestyle lifestyle then the unexplained bit that we cannot explain why we still have such kind of people okay yeah then someone else here who was definitely playing, uh, paying very close attention saying that uh, you said that women from the age of 20 years old should, should be the ones who regularly self-examine themselves. Is this to say that if my daughter is a teenager, she's not at risk? It depends on uh, whether she's already, you know, where we're talking about 20 and above, we are, we are estimating that by the age of 20, everyone has got breasts, yeah? But I'm not, uh, we're not uh, excluding that person below 20 years, yeah? If you're above uh, 12, between 12 and 20, and you've got breasts, fine, you can start doing your cell breast examination. 
that yeah. is very important and uh, we encourage the mothers actually to encourage their daughters to do that. But with the statistics yeah. they usually but do it within a different age bracket like also yeah. at Harming Health when usually the, the nurses triage a lady yeah. uh, with their BP and weight check they usually do do a breast exam at that time also so it's a it's a general age group that we use and that's the mm. number that they've sort of picked up in a lot of different facilities might it might vary but there's no reason why you know uh, you can't do that I think a lot of young girls now are yeah. quite developed nowadays mm. you know at even at the age of 13 they look like 18 you know yeah, so uh, yeah there's no there's no like it's not yeah. cast in stone okay Ivan Buru asking is it safe to remove some of the lump tissue for examining or better to remove the whole lump tissue again and I hope is. she means a doctor she doesn't mean doing it yourself at home. yes yes I hope so <laughs> actually what happens yeah once you identify a lump yeah it's always good to go to your physician don't poke at it yeah, like don't, a pimple. No, don't assume. Yeah. Because the reason why you're being told to do your cell breast examination is to identify, do you have any abnormality? Once you identify, go to your physician or go to a health center. They're going to examine you. If they find it's a wiring lamp, what they are going to do, they're going actually to schedule you for some breast biopsy. They don't have to remove it because the first thing you do, uh, you want to take a tissue just a bit of the tissue you take it for examination in the lab we call it histology you find out what is it what kind of tissue it is because many of them they're usually non-cancerous what we call benign if they find it is a cancerous tissue then now they're going to explain to you the kind of report they have what is called the histology report then from there now they're going to, to discuss with you and take you now for excision because what you do not want is to leave a cancerous lump in your breast which is going to continue growing and you know your cells those cells now are going to continue multiplying and multiplying mm -hmm. yeah and then that can yeah. spread but also um, I mean the breast being a, a tissue that's mainly fatty you, it, it might just be a fatty cyst. It might not be anything alarming. Mm -hmm. So it's a health practitioner that will be able to know if it is a cyst. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, you, not anything that you feel right. And you think, oh my God, I felt this. This is just not right. You know, it, it varies. And then also maybe before your menses, before your periods start. For some ladies, it might be seven days before that. Their breasts are already tender. Every woman is different. Everyone need, knows their body in a different way. They might have tenderness then, so maybe they might have a bit of an engorgement. Uh, breast at that moment so then they'll feel oh it's sensitive now but it was supposed to be after my periods only you know just think about it sensibly if you're not sure come in and speak to somebody and ask them more questions okay. then someone else here asking a very important question and yesterday we had Zeda in studio and she, the one thing she said was that the moment that it was confirmed she has cancer everyone around her was treating her like you know what it's over mm -hmm. it's a wrap right so for the rest of us if you, if, you, if you know someone who's actually been diagnosed with cancer what kind of and especially if you're the primary caregiver how are you supposed to treat this person normally mm -hmm. yeah they're very simple normally yeah. just normally yeah, very mm -hmm. normal well, just what, what i wanted to add is that cancer is just like any other disease you did not choose as we had talked about when we talked about the risk factors you do not choose it just happens on you just the way it can happen to me so what you do, treat the person normally, make them understand their kind of disease because that is very important. Show them how they are going to, to live with it. Explain to them the cause of management because that is very important. Yeah? And the best thing that would help you now, uh, the society, to understand them, it is always wise to also uh, give care to the next of kin, to the friends. Let them understand cancer is just like any other disease. And in that way, we are going to help one another. There, the there are support groups. There are yeah. patient. There are people I know personally who do Reiki sessions. You know, to go to help people. Uh, it's not only the person who gets uh, affected. You know, it affects the family mm -hmm. surrounding them, the people surrounding them, their primary carers, because it is. It's also an emotional stress. You know, it drains you spiritually, physically. It, it's uh, uh, then they get the stress of the treatment for paying it. Chemotherapy is very expensive. You know, there's a lot of factors around that so there are facilities where you could even go for counseling you can go for group counseling you can speak to people you know you're not alone there are facilities now that have come up in the past 10 years in Kenya there has been a lot of awareness from 
different aspects, whether it's government or non-governmental non organizations that are creating this awareness. Um, it's a shame, though, that in grassroots areas, that's where it is really lacking, and people then resort to going to witch doctors, so a lot more needs to still be done with that, and a lot of more sensitization needs to be done, and a lot more support has to be set up for the patients themselves, pe people themselves, as well as uh, you know their families and uh, carers around them on how to go about uh, how to go about it okay so we've just taught you how to do your own self-examination right so how many times in a month should I actually carry out this out once per month once per month so it's not yeah. just for October when everyone is talking about no. cancer <laughs> this is something that you should do from January to December true yes. yeah okay and finally someone here asking uh, where is humming health located in case I wanted to come in for a private, I, I think you mean you meant appointment. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're we're based in Olivia Plaza, which is off Muthega Road, um, and it's just before the Thika and Muthega fly. You know the the Thika flyover, just past Gertrude. So we're just over there on the first floor. Okay. Yeah. And, and we're offering free breast screening for the full year round. Okay, thank yeah. you very much for coming to the Morning Express this it's morning. It's our pleasure. There you've had it. Maybe thank you for having us. Something about how to do your own breast self-examination. October is the Cancer Awareness Month, but as we said, early detection definitely will save lives. So today I'm going to challenge you immediately after the show because I know you are watching. If you're about to go take a shower, please do it on yourself. If you're going to come back from work later in the evening, take some time. It takes less than two minutes. Yeah, as you saw through the demonstration. And rule number one, you have to know your breast, what it looks like on an ordinary day. That way if something is off, if something is happening that is not normal, you can be able to detect it. But right now we're going to be taking a very short commercial break. Don't go too far.